Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here. I'm going to show you this ATR2100 from Audio Technica, this ATR2500 from Audio Technica, and we're going to do this next on Geekazine. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here, and welcome to Geekazine, the special media feed where I look at technology and I look at, you know, I interview people and, and go out to CES and, and live events come through here. You can always subscribe over at geekazine.com. Think magazine, put in a geek. You've got Geekazine. It's also going to show up on how to record podcasts over at how to record podcasts.com because this kind of works in two aspects here. And that is through the technology, through USB microphones, but also through the podcasting state of USB microphones. First of all, I want to let you know uh, you can contact me over at geekazine.com. My Twitter handle is geekazine. Think magazine, put in a geek. Boom, you got geekazine. Of course, you can email me at geekazine at gmail.com and you can find out all the cool stuff, what we're talking about. And if you've got a product that you want me to review or an interview or whatnot, just let me know from there. All right, today we're going to be doing what I'm calling the Audio Technica Geek Smack. Geek Smack. I'll do it in my voice. Audio Technica Geek Smack. What does that mean? Right now, I'm actually going between two microphones. This is the Audio Technica ATR2100. It's a dynamic microphone. And over here, we have the Audio Technica 2500, ATR2500, which is a condenser microphone. And we'll talk about the differences. First of all, this is a handheld microphone. This is a tabletop microphone. You don't normally hold it with your hand when you talk. It's great for podcasters because it completely forgoes this thing right here, which uh, is my regular microphone into a mixing board into a compressor and a gate and an EQ and all that other stuff if you don't understand that if you don't know how that all works then uh, then you get confused and that's understandable because you know I'm I personally came from a music background so I understood how that all worked uh, through uh, sound mixing and stuff like that so I'm, I'm very I'm very handy when it comes to compressors and EQs and stuff like that. But for those of you who just want to make a podcast, you don't care about e e uh, how that all works, and you just want to hook up a microphone into your computer and record, this is, this is how you do it. And we've got two very popular sub $100 microphones sitting right here, both of them from Audio-Technica, both of them USB microphones. You hook them right up to your computer. I have them hooked up straight up to my computer with no extra compression running through the software and going from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a full comparison between the 2100 and the 2500. Let's start with the 2100. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off the 2500 here. And now you're hearing the vocals straight from the 2100. The best part about the, the ATR2100, it's a vocal mic. It's meant to be only a couple inches away from your mouth. Some people like to put a foam on it, but for this exercise, we are not putting any foams or any type of controlled sound on it. It's got a good range. It's great on the fly. And the best part about this microphone is it is a... It doubles as not only a USB microphone, but it also can be an XLR microphone, so I can actually hook it up to my mixer and get a completely different sound. Now, here's the dynamic. Let's talk a little bit about dynamic versus condenser. Dynamic, we're going to start with this. Uh, it's kind of like a reverse speaker. You got a little bubble inside of the microphone and a plate that the bubble sits on. Every time you talk, that bubble then vibrates. And when that bubble vibrates, that's how the sound gets out. It's got it takes some pressure to actually go through and, and push onto that onto that bubble. So there's a frequency response that this uh, that this microphone will sit on, and that's basically 50 hertz to 15,000 hertz. Now what that means is if you've got a lower voice, a bassy voice, it's not going to pick up the lower range, anything between 20 hertz and 50 hertz at all. It, it, it's just basically going to be pretty much flat line. You might as well turn it off if, you, if you've got any type of EQ in there. Um, however, if you run it through the XLR, it might run a little bit of a, of a different dynamic pattern than that. Now, it's also got what's called a car, uh, cardioid polar, uh, polar pattern, <laughs> excuse me, and you're wondering, well, what does that mean? Well, let's look at it this way. 
you got a balloon in your hands about this big. Take that balloon and smush it right on the top of the microphone. That area is where you normally want to talk through, and that's the area that it will try and pick up sound. Now, if I go back here, it could probably pick up more, more sound. Like, for instance, the closer I am, the more volume you'll get. As we move back, you'll see that the volume starts to decrease, and the volume starts to decrease until the point that you can't hear me anymore. Now, the other thing is, if I'm talking on the other side of the microphone, it's a lot harder to hear me than it is over here. But with that balloon pattern, you've got a pattern like this. And so you'll be able to pick up some sound. And of course, if you're in a very crowded situation, it's going to pick up as many sounds as it can hear. And uh, so it is not great for a conference mic uh, because it doesn't have any what's called attenuation. So it doesn't have the ability to kind of push things down to say anything beyond this scope will not it will not record and anything beyond this scope it will uh, it will capture. So it, it's a great microphone, but you will need some sort of third party compressor gate attenuator to actually make this really work in uh, in a crowded situation. But for a regular podcast, hooking it up to a PC, hooking it up to a Mac, hooking it up to an iPhone or iPad using a program like uh, GarageBand or uh, Boss Jock, this is great for a one a one a per one person situation. So I'm sitting here and I'm talking with this microphone only a couple inches away from my mouth, and you can hear it nice and crisp and go from there. So that's the ATR2100. Really quick about this, this is also a 16-bit microphone running at 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz, and it does have the on-off switch, so, and that's kind of a, a, an advantage for the ATR2100. I always say that uh, a switch is not a, is not a good thing on a microphone, but switch technology has kind of changed since the 70s and 80s and 90s when I had microphones with switches that always broke on there so um, it's a handheld mic you can put it on a stand you can put it on a shock mount but it's best if you're holding on to it as a musician would and go from there and that's the ATR 2100 now let's switch over to the 2500 this is the ATR 2500 as you can hear you're not hearing any sound from this microphone it's all coming from this microphone this is a USB only microphone it doesn't have the XLR capability as the 2100 does however this is also meant to be set on a tabletop you're not meant to put your mouth up next to the the microphone this is what's called a condenser microphone and, and basically you know how I talked about the little bubble on the plate in a condenser situation, it's a plate, uh, just off of a plate, and it vibrates like that, kind of like the clapping of two hands uh, and high uh, vibration, which then brings out the sound. It's also a cardioid polar pattern, but it's a little bit different. With the AT2500, it's what's called a side vocal microphone. So this side right here is what you talk into. You can talk into here, but it's going to sound a lot less uh, prominent. If you talk back here, it's going to sound really muddy. So you got to talk straight into the front of the microphone. You know it's the front because there's the blue light and the volume buttons as uh, this U USB microphone has. The 2100 also has a volume up and down option, but that's on the bottom side. Also has a headphone jack on both of these microphones so you can listen to yourself as you go. Now, with this pattern, the, this is meant to set onto a table, not be close to you. If you ever watch a talk show, similar microphones are sitting on talk show hosts' desks so they can get a little bit more of the area. If you took that same balloon, you would actually smush it up to the front face, and that would be your polar pattern right there, as opposed to the top, it would be on the side. So that would uh, that changes the game a little bit because, like I said, you don't have to be up against the microphone. All you have to be is in a general range. And this is perfect for anybody that has a guest on and you don't want to mic them up. You don't want to give them a microphone like this. You give them both this microphone, put it right in the middle. You got a nice quiet room like this one. You'll be able to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation without any type of extra mic up. You can also use, uh, uh, if you're doing guitar or uh, acoustic guitar or acoustic vocals this would be a better microphone to pick up more sound than this one the the uh, the frequency response is different on the 2500 this is meant for more bassy voices because it its frequency response is 30 Hertz all the way up to 15,000 Hertz now as opposed to the microphone I usually use for my podcasts 
This one is actually th uh, 30 hertz to 20,000 uh, 20, hertz, which uh, g gives you a nice range of vocal, especially the high end, the S's, and if you want, uh, if you want a better sound off of that. Now you're gonna hear. I'm gonna show you the difference once again. This is the 2500. I'm gonna start up close, but not too close, because that will spike out the uh, the audio. And as I walk back, you can hear it start to fade away, but there's still a good amount of sound as you go. Now let's switch over to the 2100. This is the 2100 working best up close, but as you go back, it starts to fade away and not get a good sound. And then once again, this is the 2500 moving back. As you can hear the sound from here, you can hear the sound from here. Or as Grover would say, near, far. And there you go. These are the microphones. Now the best part is, you hook them up to USB and you've got a program that'll do it. You can actually use both microphones like I'm doing right now. And that gives you, that can give you even better sound because it's covering more area. In this case, I've got this cross coverage of audio. So right here as I talk, both microphones can pick it up and we can get a pretty decent sound. Not always the best situation but if you have a situation like for instance you put this microphone in front of a speaker maybe you're at a um, at a conference or something like that put this microphone close to a speaker uh, the speaker's voice and you put this microphone over by maybe interviews and stuff like that then you can get the interview voice you can even turn it on and off and then this one you can get the speaker's voice or if you're across the room you've got two people talking maybe one person's uh, a musician and they're gonna play a couple songs this microphone sets on the table they can play and sing at the same time this microphone is is the uh, is the host and they can ask questions from there both of them are great microphones the biggest uh, the other big thing here is the price this one's around 30 to 35 dollars depending on where you get it this microphone's around 45 to 50 dollars although audio technica says it's about a hundred dollar microphone but you can get it for about 50 dollars both of them great prices and great ranges this one's got a little bit more to it this one's got a little bit more functionality to it as you can hook it up to an XLR, to a mixing board, and to a USB. And uh, you could actually, you can hook up both at the same time. So you can record off of your mixer and record into USB into the computer, whereas this one is USB only. And you can go from there. But once again, you use a program like SoundCloud or a pass-through program, you can then put it into your mix, that into your mixer and go from there. I know that there's lots of confusing stuff. We've got all the information over on geekyzine.com and, of course, howtorecordpodcast.com where I'll do full reviews on both websites and you can check it out there. Which one do you use? Which one do you want to use? Do you want to be up close to a microphone? Then the ATR2100 is perfect for you. If you want to have a microphone that captures a good part of the room and gets your voice, at a, especially if you've got a, a lower-end voice, then the 2500 might be your option from there. Do you have a, mic a USB microphone that you use that's not an Audio-Technica 2100 or 2500? Let me know. You can Twitter me over at Geekazine. Of course, geekazine at gmail.com. And go over to geekazine.com for all the information, all the reviews. How to record podcasts if you're a podcaster and want to find out more from there. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. This has been the Audio-Technica I'll do this again. This has been the Audio Technica Geek Smack between the 2100 and the 2500. Which one will you you get? Let me know. And until next time, you guys take care and thanks a lot for watching. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Geek out.